Hello world, I'm Laura. And I'm Tom. Welcome to Some Kind of Gaming. So first of all, thank you guys so much for being here. It's our first ever video. And uh, we really appreciate you guys coming and watching this. That's, um, that's awesome. So there's two of us here at Some Kind of Gaming. And you know what they say, those that game together, stay together. So we thought we would compile a list of our favorite games to play together and games that you might like to play with your girlfriend, boyfriend, mum, cat, or whoever you like to play games with. Now it is important to note that this is our list and I'm sure there's many more games out there on the Switch that we haven't played. So please let us know in the comments below if we've missed anything. And let us know what your favorite games were from this list. I would love to hear what you think. So without further ado, here is the uh, best games to play with your girlfriend or boyfriend on the Nintendo Switch. Diablo 3 is the top-down hack and slash game to play on the Nintendo Switch. Now this one is possible to play single player, but um, we highly recommend experiencing the story with a friend. It's so much better. Mm -hmm. As well as local co-op, you can also play this game with online multiplayer, which was perfect for me because I first played it during COVID quarantine. So it was a great way to hang out with my friends when I wasn't able to hang out with my friends. The inclusion of a voice chat on the Switch would have made this experience much better, but that's definitely a conversation for another day. Yeah, there's a whole nother video on that. I'm sure <laughs> it would have actually helped like play every game on this list. I think so, yeah, true. If you can play it with your girlfriend while you're not together, but uh, yes. Anyway, anyways, moving on. Cutting down hordes of enemies is never a dull experience in Diablo 3, especially when you've got a loved one to share it with. We played through this one like two or three times, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it never got old. I think the, uh, the multiple class options definitely help with this. So each season we uh, chose a different class and you know, we just kind of got a little bit obsessed with what each one did and what their final move was. Yeah. To get to like level 60 or something to see that final move. So yeah, we, we played this one a lot. Uh, the story itself tells of the rise and fall of Diablo and that doesn't get old through the multiple playthroughs. You end up picking up on a little bit more each time and yeah, trust me, it, do it doesn't get old. Like a lot of RPGs, Diablo 3 has heaps of items and gear that you can choose from. They're also fully customizable in this game, so you could spend hours customizing your gear. I thought it was really fun though, because you can take some stats of one item which you might not like, and then make it look like another item which you might love, but it has really poor stats. Yeah, the movesets as well are fully customizable, because you can't actually use all of the moves. And there's so many that you can learn. Oh, there's so many to choose from, so I found myself uh, quite often being like, oh, just, just let me try this move with, with, with this other move. Oh. You would have to go out of the menu in order to test out the move and then go back into it. Yeah, to, <laughs> to, to re, redo it 100%. It can take a while, but I think it's half the fun of it. It is half the fun, yeah. Customising, definitely half the fun of this game. I think it also lent to how we were able to play the game so many times. Oh, definitely, yeah. That comes back to the whole like classes thing. Like more classes, more customization. So Diablo 3 is obviously a little bit of an older title, being almost like 10 years old now. Oh, that makes me feel a bit old. <laughs> so since I've played this one for the first time, there's been so much more stuff that's been added. You've got like more weapons, more story, a whole new class. So yeah, if you haven't picked it up, please don't sleep on it. Diablo 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Keeping in the theme of hack and slash gameplay, our next game is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. The first Hyrule Warriors game was, I think, the first Switch game that we played together. Yep, yep, the first ever Switch game we played together. So it definitely holds a special place in our heart. We had to play this one together too. Yes, and Age of Calamity is superior to that in every single way. So we're massive Breath of the Wild fans and massive Zelda fans in general. So having the Age of Calamity be like a prequel to Breath of the Wild, ooh yeah, we had to play this one, that's for sure. Yeah, it was definitely really cool that Age of Calamity added in canon story elements from Breath of the Wild. I loved getting to know the old characters better and also getting to know the new ones as well, like Terrico. Well, getting to know the old characters in the first place, really. Yeah. Because Breath of the Wild didn't, it didn't give you a whole lot, to be honest. So it was really nice to be able to actually have some story. There's a lot of Warriors games on the market now and they all borrow gameplay from the original Dynasty Warriors. So I think the story elements that they included in Age of Calamity really set this Warriors title apart from the rest. Yeah, it's the best Warriors title on the Switch in our humble opinion. It's also the best hack and slash title on the Switch in our humble opinion. So there is no online option to play Age of Calamity multiplayer. So we are forced to sit on the couch together and you know spend some actual time together playing this one. But as far as couch co-op games go, sets the bar pretty high. 
We highly recommend picking up Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. We had heaps of fun playing through it and hopefully you do too. Mm -hmm. So next up we have two big budget first party Nintendo titles to tell you about. I'm sure you've all heard of these ones. I don't think it's going to come to any surprise to you that the first is only the highest selling Switch game of all time. Oh yeah, Oh, you probably haven't heard of this one actually. Maybe not. It's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. <laughs> So if you own a Switch, you should probably own Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Everybody that stepped foot into our house, bar like my dad, has played this game with us. I think we should change that. What, make my dad play? Yeah. Or dad would be funny. I think he would like but it. Let us know in the comments below if you want a video on my dad playing Mario Kart for the first <laughs> time ever. He's like 70, man. He'll love it. Yeah, he would. Everybody <laughs> loves Mario Kart. Everybody's at least heard of Mario Kart, even my dad. Yeah. And uh, in our humble opinions, once again, it's the best racing game ever. Full stop. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has heaps of new courses and also a lot of your old favourites that you can race with updated graphics. There's no single player mode to unlock any of the races though, so it's definitely best played with a friend. Best played with your girl friend. <laughs> So the next game that comes as no surprise to anyone, I'm sure, is none other than Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, just like Mario Kart is the definitive racing title, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the definitive fighting title. Not only on the Nintendo Switch, in our opinion, but just of all time. I mean, like, who doesn't want to see Peach take on Ganondorf or, I don't know, Pac-Man take on Charizard? The options are literally limitless in this game. When we first played this game, it was just after we came back from traveling. So we didn't have any money to buy any other games to play. So we ended up playing the story mode of this one for a long time. Yeah, ironically, we actually played the single player mode with each other. Well, a lot more than we did the multiplayer options, at least, at least at the beginning. Yeah, definitely at the beginning. The single player mode and being able to unlock the characters that way is definitely more rewarding. Yes. But in my opinion, the best way to play with your partner is in Smash mode. Definitely the best way to play with your partner is in Smash mode. When you want to just take them on. Yeah. Smash them. One on one. You gotta smash them. Super Smash Brothers is definitely the safest bet on this list. It should probably be the first game you purchase on your Nintendo Switch. I mean like, why have you not played Smash it? Why? Just do it. Do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Now that we're past the most obvious choices, here's one that you might not have heard of. Night Squad's actually kind of hard to put into any one category. Yeah, I actually had to like look up how others would describe it for this one because I, I didn't know how. So Nintendo.com says that it's a chaotic arena friendship destroyer. Yeah, so I guess we recommend having a strong relationship. Or you can play on the same team if your relationship's on the rocks. Ooh, yes, you're right. So basically it's a battle royale game. You play in short rounds with up to eight players and there's several game modes. So it ranges from the more obvious capture the flag or last man standing, but then goes into more obscure modes like juggernaut or socket. Yeah, so basically there's a game mode to suit any situation or any relationship for that matter. Basically what we're trying to say is that it's really fun and definitely worth picking it up. So there are two different versions of Night Squad available at the moment. You've got Night Squad and Night Squad 2. They are slightly different. There's some like different game modes between each one. Mm -hmm. The second one has some like quality of life improvements and the graphics are better. But both of them are really fun. It doesn't really matter what one you pick up. They're both just as good as each other. So we couldn't really create a list of games to play with your boyfriend or girlfriend without including Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game. Since this guy got it for me for Valentine's Day to play together, and also since the whole story revolves around relationships to begin with. So this game can be played single player, but I feel like it was built with multiplayer in mind. I mean like, this game is hard yeah, man. Yeah, it's actually kind of hard. Yeah, we, we, we struggle with both of us, so I can't imagine how you would get through it on your own. Maybe it's just us, but I don't know. Yeah, do we suck at video games? <laughs> no. So just like the comics in the movie, the game revolves around having to defeat all of Ramona Flower's evil exes. There isn't that much story that's actually provided to you in the game, so I definitely recommend either reading the comics or watching the movie before you start playing. But it's also easy to forget once you get immersed in the retro art style and the soundtrack. Ooh man, that soundtrack. 
As you guys might know if you've seen the movie or read the comics, Scott Pilgrim is really musically orientated. Like he plays bass in, in a band called Sex Bob Bomb and yeah, it's just it's just a fun time and that soundtrack, oh, it really comes out on top. It's like really 8-bit, like yeah. retro style, but oh, it's fantastic. This is like a teamwork orientated game, as we mentioned. I can't imagine playing it single player. So while Laura's like beating up a horde of enemies or something, I'm like maybe going getting a key, opening a door, or even trying to revive her. <laughs> it can lead to some frustrating times as I don't always get there in time, or Laura doesn't always get there in time to revive mm -hmm. me. But there's nothing relationship ending or anything like that. So if your girlfriend likes beat-em-ups or you like old school beat-em-ups as well, it's definitely a must play. I think that you'll both really enjoy it. Yeah, this game could have easily seen an appearance at arcades in the late 80s if it had existed back then. That would have been awesome. So yeah, if you're, if you're into old school retro games, check out Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. The game. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 3 is definitely underrated for a first party Nintendo Switch game and especially as a multiplayer game. So there is this like multiplayer facet that they've got in there called the Scare Scraper, which has online capabilities. But this video is more about titles to play with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And we honestly think the best way to do that is to play through the story together. Now I must admit that I was kind of late to Luigi's Mansion Party. Yeah, we were late to it for sure. <laughs> it was our most recent multiplayer game that we played together. Yes, at least one of. So I did start playing the game by myself and I played about half of the levels but as soon as Tom joined, the game got so much more fun. So I was Gooigi in this whole experience, which is like <laughs> Luigi's gooey counterpart. So I was able to like utilize all these like gooey superpowers to help you solve the puzzles within the levels. All the puzzles are super unique as well. And we we're able to double team these like huge ghosts, which made short work of larger enemies. Um, it is possible to do all these things on your own as you can like control Gooigi separately. You switch control back and forth. But it's not as fun. Luigi's Mansion is a puzzle game, so having another brain on the scene was quite welcome. Some of the puzzles get quite tricky, but then some of the other ones are deceivingly simple. We found ourselves looking way too far into some of the solutions, like when we were in the pyramid area and sucked up all of the sand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to look for some secret entrance into the pyramid. <laughs> yeah, but all we needed to do was press A on the door. Yeah. Yeah, just literally walk through the door. <laughs> sometimes that Zelda brain gets the best of you sometimes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion is a great game no matter how you choose to play it. It's great on your own as well, but sharing it with that special someone is, well, special. Ooh, overcooked. We've definitely saved the best one for last. Or the worst one for last. Or the biggest relationship tester for last, at <laughs> least. Maybe we should like put some kind of disclaimer or something here. <laughs> yeah. Warning, the following gameplay may cause intense frustration, strong language, and the need for couples counselling. A strong relationship is advised. Overcooked is a top-down cooking simulation game, but it's definitely way more chaotic than that sounds. Yeah, I'm actually like a chef in real life, and I can confirm that this is easily the most stress I've ever had in the kitchen, <laughs> but also by far the most fun I've ever had as well. So it's funny how like our real world roles take on like what's going on in this game. Laura's the front of house manager at the restaurant I work at. And quite often I'll be like chopping the food or like cooking the rice or something while Laura's like screaming at me like, I need this on the pass. <laughs> I so, don't yell at you at work. Oh, yeah, but you do an overcook. Yeah, an overcook I do. <laughs> it's also funny how some of the real world Karens also translate into the game. <laughs> just like in real life, some customers are just a bit harder to please than others. And overcooked the Karen's frustration manifest as tiny boxes shaking around in the corner like a Karen fit to burst until they finally explode and storm out of your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and then you lose points. Oh god, so unlike in real life, <laughs> overcooked forces you cook for these said Karens on like two moving trucks speeding down the highway or on top of a couple of air balloons or in any other number of like weird situations. I would definitely rather cook fish and chips on an iceberg than deal with Karens, to be honest. <laughs> so I know this whole thing sounds pretty strange, but the core gameplay loop is extremely addictive and hilariously fun. I've actually never laughed so hard while playing a game in my life. It's frustrating, but it's so much fun. It's part of the enjoyment. It's part of the, the charm of Overcooked, isn't it? 
So I feel like it is important to note that we're talking about Overcooked as a whole here. So there is two games to choose from as well as a lot of DLC, but luckily for you guys, there is an all you can eat version that contains both games and all of the DLC, so you don't have to download it all separately like we did. Yeah, we can guarantee that you'll most likely like to play all of this content. And if you do, please let us know in the comments below if it really is the relationship ender that we think it might be. <laughs> Sorry if it is. <laughs> so that's it, right? I think the so. The end of our first ever video. <laughs> nice. So this is our list of favorite games that we love to play together. Whether you're introducing your girlfriend to gaming for the first time or she's already a gamer like myself, hopefully you've found something that you guys love to play together. And if you have, please let us know in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of us here next week, please subscribe. That would be fantastic. So thank you again if you are still here. I'm Laura and this is Tom from Some Kind of Gaming. And hopefully we see you next week.